A commenter asked an interesting question. In larger villages consisting of hundreds of individuals, like you've spoken about before, that move about every century or so, how many deer do you suppose on average were harvested each year? I'm curious because of the large amounts of uses for buckskin, sinew, and of course meat. They used a lot of it for clothing, cordage, and food, but how much would be needed for such a large community? Now, I don't know of any historical source that answers this question, and I don't know of any archaeological research that can help us, but I'd like to try and answer it in some way or another using math. Before that, I need to issue a couple of corrections with regards to the question that was asked. An unremarkable village would consist of several hundred individuals, like three or four hundred. A large village would consist of several thousand. The villages would also move several times a century, every 20 to 50 years, depending on how long the posts of the houses lasted. With that out of the way, let's begin. We're going to start by determining how many deer the average human would need to kill if he wanted his diet to consist entirely of venison. To begin with, the average person needs 2,000 calories a day. This is of course an average, a working adult is going to need a lot more and a filthy child is going to need a lot less. We're going to say that on average, in any given community, things are going to average out. So how much food is actually on a deer? Live deer within a fairly normal weight range come in between 80 at the minimum and 300 pounds at the top. The average of these two numbers is 190 pounds, which is probably a little bit higher than the mean, but not by too much. A decently skilled butcher can usually get about half the live weight of a deer in meat, but this is going to vary depending on the composition of the individual deer. So we would get between 40 and 150 pounds of meat from any given deer, with 95 pounds of meat being the average. So how many calories is that? According to some statistics I found online, lean venison has 550 calories per pound. Lean venison isn't such a useful data point because even a small amount of fat is going to change the caloric density by a significant margin. I wasn't able to find data for fatty venison, but deer tallow has about 3,500 calories per pound. I'm going to say that at the upper estimate, a particularly fatty deer is going to have as much fat as meat per pound which gives us an estimated 2,000 calories per pound for a particularly fatty deer or an estimated 1,000 for an average deer. Which means that the average person is going to need to consume between 4 and 1 pound of deer per day with an average of 2 pounds. Comparing this against our size estimates, we can see that a small, lean deer is going to last the average person 10 days. A large, fatty deer might last 150 days. And an average deer with a healthy BMI is going to last about 46 days. Which means that for the average person to exist on nothing but deer flesh, they need between 36.5 small lean deer and 2.5 large fatty deer, or 7.9 deer on average. Extrapolating this into a village of 300, they are going to need between 10,950 per year and 750 per year, with an average of 2,370. We can scale this up into a large town of 3,000 by simply adding a decimal, so 109,500 deer at most, 7,500 deer at minimum, and an average of 23,700. So let's get even crazier and scale it up to a nation of 30,000. Here we get an upper number of 1,095,000 deer per year, a minimum number of 75,000, and an average of 237,000. These numbers are flatly unrealistic. The territory of the neutrals, what became southwestern Ontario, was estimated to have about 400,000 deer when the Jesuits came through. Our upper total is more than twice that. Our average total would be sufficient to extirpate the deer within a decade. Our lower total is the only one approaching sustainability, and people would need to be extremely selective, only taking the biggest, fattest deer. Fortunately for us, there is an obvious flaw in our calculations. We have not taken into account other sources of food. Let's scrap these recent numbers and go back. The Iroquoian subsistence model was supposed to be an even split between plants and meat. Men and women providing for the community as equals within their respective spheres. This allows us to quite safely chop the deer requirements in half. We then have to reduce them even further because there's more than one type of meat. I don't have any data to split this up in an accurate fashion, so for convenience sake I'm just going to propose an even three-way split. A third of meat from deer, a third of meat from fish, and a third of meat from turkeys, bears, rabbits, all the other animals. Which gives us our new and improved total of, at most, 
6.08 deer at minimum 0.41 deer and at an average 1.31 deer per person per year. So for a village of 300 that works out to at most 1,824, at minimum 123, and an average of 393. And we can add a zero to get a large town and two zeros to get a nation. Let's examine these numbers in a little bit more detail to see how accurate they might be. First off, are they sustainable? The upper number is not sustainable, but it's also not realistic to have half of your deer population be undersized and undernourished. The other two numbers are sustainable. I think the total deer population for Ontario these days is a little over 400,000, and the Ontario government allows, I think, 63,000 to be killed every year. So the other key thing that people got from deer was leather. Would these numbers be sufficient to clothe a nation? It takes about seven deer skins to make a full set of clothing. So with that in mind, how often could a person replace the full set of clothes using these numbers above? So with six deer a year, a person could replace their clothes every other year. This is a little bit excessive. That's a lot of tanning and sewing to go through that frequently. The low estimate of 0.4 per year is insufficient to provide clothing. It would take 18 years to replace a full set. And while leather clothing lasts a long time, 18 years is kind of pushing it. The average here seems perfectly reasonable. So, to sum up and conclude, Iroquoian people living back in the day would have required a little over one deer per person per year. By modern standards, this is rather a lot, but the diversity of the subsistence model, coupled with the prioritization of larger, fattier animals, coupled with the relatively low population density, prevented this exploitation from becoming unsustainable. It should be noted that this whole endeavor has been nothing more than a math experiment. Math experiments can often paint a useful picture, but they do not often represent reality terribly well. The results of this experiment are not factual. They are at best a flawed interpretation. This experiment was designed to give a rough impression not to provide anything definitive. That being said, I hope you found this interesting. Thank you for listening.